Good evening, space flight enthusiasts. Yet another unexpected update, but one that I want to make sure you guys are aware of as rapidly as possible. It appears that these wastewater accusations that were made early this month in a CNBC article are not going away anytime soon. Now, some of you have requested, well, Actually, a few have demanded that I issue a retraction of my previous reporting on this issue because SpaceX issued a very lengthy statement on X stating that the CNBC article was factually inaccurate and then they provide a number of justifications for this. However, I am hesitant to issue any sorts of retractions based on SpaceX testimony alone because they have an agenda. Now, of course, CNBC has an agenda too, so what I did is reach out to the FAA, who by the way are also being accused of negligence in this particular article, because they have oversight of this situation and should have been responsible to make sure that all wastewater disposal regulations and all other environmental considerations were being adhered to while SpaceX was carrying out their testing. So. If they weren't actually doing that or were negligent in any way, then that's something that the FAA would definitely be concerned about. It took some time for me to get a reply from the FAA, but I finally did. And as I said, I don't think this issue is going away anytime soon. Quote, the Federal Aviation Administration released the draft tiered environmental assessment for SpaceX's proposal to increase the number of launches and landings of its Starship Super Heavy vehicle at the Boca Chica launch site in Cameron County, Texas on July 29, 2024. The FAA invited interested parties to submit comments on the draft EA. The public comment period for the draft EA closes on August 29, 2024. In other words, today. On August 9th of 2024, the FAA became aware of allegations that SpaceX violated the Clean Water Act at the Boca Chica launch site. The FAA was unable to confirm the accuracy of certain representations in SpaceX's license application and the draft tiered environmental assessment prior to the public meeting scheduled for August 13th, 15th, and 20th. As a result, the FAA chose to postpone the public meetings until these matters could be resolved. The FAA will release a revised draft tiered environmental assessment in the future. The revised draft EA will be accompanied by an additional public comment period and public meetings. The dates, times, and locations of the rescheduled public meetings will be made publicly available at least 30 days in advance of the meeting. Now, the statement the FAA was unable to confirm the accuracy of certain representations in SpaceX's license applications probably refers to this Mercury reading that was taken at the site. This is, by the way, directly from a SpaceX environmental report, and it shows a very large amount of Mercury in the first sample, about a hundred times higher, actually, than what we have in the second sample. Now, SpaceX claims that that was simply a typo, a decimal place being put in the wrong spot. However, if you see the nickel reading just beneath it, there's also a massive disparity in the two readings, and the numbers for copper and zinc are also enormously higher than the second sample. This looks a little bit more like an outlier than a decimal point misprint or something like that, but regardless, it appears that the FAA is unable to confirm the accuracy of these tests and the mercury results are something that the CNBC article really focused on because it's a very toxic level if one takes it at face value. Again, it could be just an outlier. It could be some sort of botched test. This doesn't necessarily mean that SpaceX has definitely been violating any sort of 
environmental regulations. And as I said before, the CNBC reporter definitely has an agenda too. Apparently, this is somebody that's put out a number of articles about Elon Musk and none of them have been particularly favorable. That being the case, though, the FAA has not dismissed these allegations. And apparently, neither has the Texas Commission on Environmental Quality. When asked for a statement on this particular issue, they replied, quote, there is a pending enforcement action. Due to this, we cannot comment any further at this time. Any comments from the agency could jeopardize the integrity of our enforcement process. So regardless of what CNBC's motives might be or their agenda, this appears to be more than just a misprint and factually inaccurate or not there does seem to be something to this story otherwise these two agencies would not be going to these kinds of extremes i mean we're going to need a revised draft environmental assessment based on these findings and of course the public meetings in relation to all of this were all rescheduled and we need to find out exactly what's been going on with all all of this before these public meetings are held. Otherwise, these test results are going to be the only thing that anybody talks about. So how is this going to impact the scheduling of Flight 5? Well, it's tough to say, but I would be surprised if the FAA grants a launch license before they've gotten a few more facts on what's going on with all of this. If there have been any sort of environmental violations, it would be a very bad idea for the FAA to knowingly allow SpaceX to proceed unless these issues had been completely addressed. And also, the FAA needs to report their findings to the public, so we'll just have to see. I wish I could give you a little bit more than that, but I'm afraid at this stage, I can't. Fortunately, the FAA seems to be pretty prompt on keeping journalists informed about all of what's going on with this, so hopefully we'll get an update on this situation very soon soon. Thanks very much for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and rest assured if either of these agencies come out with a public statement saying that the CNBC article is in error, I will definitely issue a story about the whole thing and happily issue a retraction. Regardless of what I might think about NASA's decision to go with something like Lunar Starship as our main HLS system to try to return human beings to the surface of the moon. That's what we have to work with right now, and we absolutely have to get it up and running as rapidly as possible if we want Artemis to succeed. So I'm 100% behind Starship, 100% eager to see that next launch happen. So until it does, I urge all of you to stay angry about space.